Welcome to the Virtual Parent Academy. I am Stephanie Sahadeo, your Virtual Parent Academy host for this event. We are excited to have you join us this evening for the fourth and final Virtual Parent Academy of this school year. Tonight's session is titled, Decision Making for the Future, College and Career. The parent and family engagement team have adopted four strands for all of our district-wide initiatives. The following strands are designed to enhance student achievement through the support of community and family involvement. Supporting student success focuses on student achievement and academics. Getting involved focuses on empowering families to lead and advocate for their students. Promoting well-being focuses on social-emotional wellness and health of families. And embracing multiculturalism focuses on connecting diverse cultures to our school system. Before I introduce our guest speakers for the evening, I would like to take a moment to say welcome and thank you to everyone this evening that is logging in to our final session. We have two presenters this evening, all from our very own OCPS departments. Our first presenter this evening is Anna William Jones, Director of Mental Health Services, who will be sharing information on social emotional learning as it pertains to one's future. Followed by Nicole Gurley, OCPS College Transition Counselor, presenting information on college and career readiness. Both Anna and Nicole are online this evening to answer any questions during this presentation. Please help me welcome Anna. Hello, and welcome to this evening's Virtual Parent Academy presentation. My name is Anna Williams-Jones, and I'm the Director for Mental Health Services. This evening, we're going to talk to you about how social-emotional learning has a positive impact on college and career opportunities. College and career readiness depends on academic readiness, but this is only part of the equation. Social and emotional learning, or SEL, is also important. Developing students' social and emotional skills has been shown to improve academic performance and provide students with a solid foundation for achieving success in post-secondary environments and in the workplace. The Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, or CASEL, defines social and emotional learning as the process through which children and adults acquire and effectively apply the knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. The five areas of SEL are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. SEL development is ongoing from childhood through adulthood. SEL skills impact how we know ourselves, how we understand the world around us, and how we build meaningful relationships with others and how we make good decisions for ourselves and others. We have a brief video which explains how schools and parents work together to support social emotional growth. Let's take a look. As parents, we know that there is more to raising a child than teaching reading, writing, history, and math. Raising a child means that schools and parents must work together to create safe and supportive environments while helping children to understand themselves, understand others, and make responsible decisions. It's important for children to see that they have role models that aren't always the ones that they expect to have. You know that saying that um, parents are the first teachers, that's, that's very true because I think that as a school, there's only so much that we can do. I think parent involvement in school is huge because I think it's really important when kids feel the partnership that their families have with a school. And so we work to have structures and systems in place that will help kids be able to do those things. Social and emotional learning, or SEL, is how children and adults understand and manage their emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. 
When adults are modeling SEL for students, whether it's parents or teachers or staff members, they're really building relationships with one another, which ultimately impacts how they work with one another as adults. I think it's really, really important for them to be self-aware. I think being able to identify their emotions and deal with them, it's sometimes really important to be able to stop and reflect. We're intellectual, emotional creatures. To learn the skills necessary, one has to have both a healthy internal life and external life. And so being self-aware of that is really critical. First of all, we have to learn how to manage our stress ourselves. How to deal with stress. In today's society where everything just seems to go 90 miles an hour, you have to just take a time out yourself. I mean, it's important for it to be shown to him that there's different ways to deal with stressful situations. Teach how to deal with emotions. Like, did we give them the skills to be able to handle conflict or resolve conflict? When kids are able to process their own feelings, acknowledge what's going on with others around them, not only for others, but for oneself, right? Forgiveness and what, what led to this? How might I do this differently? They have to have a sense of empathy. They have to have respect for other people, um, other cultures. I want him to learn how to interact with other kids, how to play, how to cooperate, you know, how to do things together, also have fun. And I think that has been the best thing with my relationship with my daughter, that she's able to communicate well with others, speak her feelings. That's important because the world around us is all about relationships. Our children need to be able to guide themselves through there so that they can achieve those things that they need to achieve and be able to communicate them effectively. I'm always thinking about how are we potentially impacting students in a way that will make them think twice. Like how are we helping them make good decisions? He's starting to understand that why do one thing instead of another and how it affects other people. Explaining to him his actions have influence on his quality of life. I think our children need to be able to be confident enough to articulate what they're feeling and to be able to just showcase their strengths. Those five competencies apply to being successful anywhere. That's the kind of employee I'd like to work with. That's the kind of student that I'd like to have in my classroom. That's the kind of person I'd like to study with after school. And that helps build a positive climate and environment that sets the tone for learning. Research shows that SC can have a positive impact on school climate and promote a host of benefits for students, including better academic performance, improved attitudes about school, fewer negative behaviors like office referrals or drug and alcohol use, and reduced emotional stress. Every child can reach their full potential and are provided the supports and the resources that they need to reach that potential. My hope would be that families are engaged and feel welcome at the school and can get the resources that they need through the school. In order for students to meet their full potential academically, I think that you know, their social and emotional needs need to also be met. Social emotional learning is something that people can learn and that we can help to teach that. My wish or my hope is that schools see themselves as places of support for kids and families and community. We are their number one role model. Between modeling and direct engagement in their education and direct engagement with the school and the teachers and participating, the parent's the number one educator from day one. Those strategies that mom and dad share with them are also the same strategies that schools have shared with them. As students learn social and emotional skills, it's important that they have opportunities to practice and apply those skills in real life situations, both at school and at home. One of the ways that parents can help children at home through the use of social emotional learning is to connect with the school. Whether it is attending local school meetings, parent teacher conference, emailing their teachers, I think it's just important in whatever way you feel you want to engage to do so. Parents can help bring SEL into the home in many ways. Here are five examples to consider. For self-awareness, Take time to talk about feelings with your child every day by sharing your own feelings and asking your child to name their feelings as well. For self-management, teach and model positive ways of managing stress, disappointment, and anger. For social awareness, use story time to develop social awareness by asking your child how they would feel if they were in a similar situation as the characters in the story. For relationship skills, Develop your child's ability to resolve a conflict 
by asking questions about the situation instead of giving advice. For example, try asking, what do you think your friend was feeling when that happened? Or, how can you work to make things right? And finally, for responsible decision making, talk to your child about consequences by asking questions like, what might happen if you choose not to wear your coat if it's cold outside? Or, how might your friend feel if you choose to cancel your plans to get together? Social emotional learning helps us because it brings us all together. Social emotional learning is a journey we're all on until the day we die. We're all striving to be the best person we can be. My hopes and dreams are that my students just are able to fulfill their full potential in life. We need every child to be ready to take on whatever the world brings them. And social emotional learning and the strategies that teachers use to garner that will enable our children to get there. I just want them to be ready for the world and, and take it on and take it by storm. All five areas of social-emotional learning significantly impact college success. Self-awareness is important for maintaining a well-grounded sense of self-confidence. Self-awareness involves the ability for a person to believe they can accomplish a goal or execute a plan. Self-awareness has been shown to shape long-term aspirations and career trajectories. A strong sense of self can help high school students feel confident in applying for college or in choosing vocations that are good for them. Strong self-awareness can lead adolescents to choose fields where they are most likely to be successful and fulfilled. Emotion regulation is an important part of self-management and involves learning how to handle feeling overwhelmed and to adopt strategies that help you feel balanced again after feeling overwhelmed. Self-management is important for students as they start to experience more difficult school work in high school and college and experience more intense emotions and pressure to succeed. Students who can cope with stress have been found to be able to transition to college more successfully and do better academically than students who have difficulty handling stress. Social awareness helps us recognize and appreciate how we are the same and how we are different from others. An important part of social awareness is the ability to understand and respect the perspective of others in social situations. Social awareness can also help you identify situations where social support can be a resource for managing difficult problems. Parent and peer support for students transitioning to college or a career can help reduce stress, anxiety, and help students to meet the increased demands of college. Social awareness can also help students navigate work environments where they may need to use these skills to avoid or resolve conflict in an appropriate way. Having strong relationship skills can help students build a sense of belonging in college and help with the process of adjusting during the first year of college or in transitioning to a vocation. Relationship skills also help students build new social networks, which can help reduce feelings of loneliness, increase feelings of support, and help students stay in college. Relationship skills help students access adult support including high school guidance counselors, college faculty members, managers, and other support services. Relationship skills include things like communicating effectively, developing positive relationships, demonstrating cultural competency, practicing teamwork, and collaborative problem solving, resolving conflicts constructively, resisting negative social pressure, showing leadership in groups, seeking or offering support and help when needed, and standing up for the rights of others. 
Responsible decision making is the ability to make caring and constructive choices about personal behavior and social interactions across diverse situations. This includes the capacities to consider ethical standards and safety concerns, and to evaluate the benefits and consequences of various actions for personal, social, and collective well being. Responsible decision making becomes increasingly more important as students enter new settings that are independent from their parents, like a college and a workplace. As students get older, they get better at reasoning in abstract and in systematic ways. This can help students imagine possible outcomes, good and bad, before they make a decision. This can be essential as they face decisions that may have a lasting impact on their long-term life satisfaction. According to a 2013 survey by Castle, most teachers believe that there is a connection between SEL and positive life outcomes. According to the survey, 87% of teachers believe a larger focus on social and emotional development would improve workplace readiness. 87% of teachers believe social and emotional skills help students to become good citizens as adults. 80% of teachers believe social and emotional development would benefit a student's ability to successfully move through school and stay on track to graduate. 78% of teachers believe a larger focus on social and emotional development would help prepare students to get to and through college. And 75% believe that social and emotional development would improve student achievement in academic coursework. There are many ways to support social and emotional development at home. Some examples include, be a good listener, Listening is a critical skill that can be hard to learn. By actively listening to your child, you can help them develop this skill, which will support SEL development. Model the behavior you seek. Children learn a lot by watching their parents. By modeling the ways we want our children to act, we can give them a guide for positive social and emotional interactions that they will carry with them into adulthood. Nurture your child's self-esteem. A child or adolescent with good self-esteem is happier, more well-adjusted, and often does better in school. Give your child opportunities to build self-esteem. For example, give your child responsibilities, allow them to make age-appropriate decisions, and show your appreciation when they do well. Respect differences. Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses, unique talents and abilities. Celebrating these differences and resisting the urge to compare your child to others can help your child embrace who they are and develop a strong sense of self, which can lead to more confident and healthy decision making. Having a strong sense of self can also help adolescents as they begin to face challenging situations and transition to life independent of their parents. Please take advantage of support services. Now, let's take a look at a video on parent-teen relationships. There's no such thing as a perfect family. Parents may often think they're doing what's best for their child because they love them, but those actions may not always necessarily be healthy. As children grow up and reach their teenage years, this is usually when things take a turn for the worst. Arguments may be frequent, misunderstandings increase, and parents will begin to wonder what happened to the sweet child they used to play with. This is a concern commonly experienced, and we want to help be a part of the solution. Here's eight effective ways that can strengthen parent-teen relationships. Number one, hug each other on a daily basis. Psychologist Janet Kekult Glazer states, the older you are, the more fragile you are physically, so contact becomes increasingly important for good health. When you enter your teenage years, you may be reluctant to hug your parents because it's no longer considered to be cool. As you learn to be more independent, you may keep physical affection to a minimum. However, hugging is good for your health and acts as a natural stress reliever. Approaching adulthood can be scary and challenging. When you hug your parents on a daily basis, it can act as a physical reminder that you're not alone. 
physical and emotional support are equally important when you work on fortifying relationships in general. Number two, turn off technology devices during interactions. It can be hard to walk away from technology when we are constantly connected by it. You don't have to live in a cave to save your relationship with your parents, but it doesn't hurt to put your phone on silent so you don't feel obligated to respond to every email or text message when you're interacting with your parents. When you're in the car with your family, it's also good practice to turn off the music so it gives you an opportunity to talk. Although music can be a great way to bond by singing your favorite songs together, on bad days when communication is vital, it's good to stray from using technology as a means of escaping from one another. Number three, connect before transitions or large decision making. Making transitions can be challenging, especially in your teenage years. This is the time when your child begins to figure out who they are and what kind of life they want to live. A lot of decision making takes place. There are going to be many days when they are uncertain about what direction to take. Don't hesitate to reach out and let your child know you are there for them. Give them advice and any insights you think will be helpful to them, but don't tell them directly what to do. Have them figure out what they want to do, but be supportive and understanding. Number four, make time to spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with each other. As you get older, more responsibilities tend to stack up on your plate. You start working more to build the skills you want for your desired career path, and your friends move away to chase their own dreams. You're no longer in close proximity with them, so you have to schedule compatible times to see each other. This makes it incredibly easy to put your family on the back burner when you're already juggling work with your social life. But don't forget to set aside time to spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with your parents. It can be extremely tempting to postpone plans when you may just want to be alone to unwind for a while or go out and engage with new faces in your networking circle. But this is how parent-teen relationships weaken. Distance is created and putting in effort becomes minimal to none. Sustaining a strong relationship with your parents can be difficult with increasing age, but ghosting them easily destroys it. It doesn't have to be a lot. You can spend 15 minutes each day to have meaningful conversations or set aside an hour during the weekend and make dinner together. Number five, encourage emotions instead of shutting them out. Emotions are messy, but it's important to be mindful towards each other's feelings. Don't be quick to dismiss them, especially during arguments. Regulating your emotions can be difficult when you are strongly affected by a situation. But keep in mind that a strong relationship is built upon the ways in which we communicate our emotions. If your child is hurting, don't be neglectful towards them. Even if the both of you have a hard time talking about the source of pain, emotions can be only put off for so long until they explode. Number six, listen to understand, not with the intent to react. When you're mad or disappointed in your child, it's easy to listen to them just to confirm your angry emotions. Instead of being quick to react, take the time to listen and understand where your child is coming from. Even if you wholeheartedly disagree with their actions or opinions, if you choose to yell at them, this may cause even more resentment between the both of you. As a result, communication may suffer because your child may retreat and refuse to speak to you. Learn to work out your differences by broadening your perspective and finding a solution together where the both of you can benefit from. Number seven, respect boundaries. Toxic behavior derives from getting rid of boundaries. If you want to have a good relationship with your child, manifest healthy behavior by respecting their boundaries. This can be challenging on your end as your child begins wanting more privacy and freedom, but good parenting involves providing opportunities to make mistakes and learn from them. Don't rob your child of that growth. Instead, create a safe space where failure is normalized. Part of loving and caring for someone means letting go when it's necessary. This is how trust is built. Number eight, catch your child in the act of doing something right. Teenagers often struggle with their self-confidence. It's important to recognize that peer pressure can ruin your child's self-esteem because popular beliefs aren't always the healthiest or most nurturing. Don't add fuel to the hell they're trying to walk through. In other words, refrain from expressing harsh criticism and negativity. Instead, focus on the deeds your child is doing right and praise them for those actions. Not only will it show that you have been paying attention to them, but this will also help boost their self-esteem. In addition to normal adolescent concerns, that can influence social emotional development. The COVID-19 pandemic has provided new challenges for students to overcome. How do we keep students resilient during COVID? Here are a few options. Adjusting expectations. 
It is harder for everyone to learn and work at their best under these circumstances. It's okay if your child doesn't get every task correct the first time. It is okay to ask for help if you are confused about a project due. It is okay if they are not part of extracurricular activities. It's okay if your house looks a little messy because you choose to hang out and watch a favorite family movie instead of vacuuming. You are not alone. We are here to help you. Empathize with and validate their feelings. We are all stressed. Talking about our feelings helps us cope and get along. Make time to listen non-judgmentally without interrupting or rushing them. Ask what is upsetting about learning online, wearing masks, or not being able to have a big birthday party with friends. Be a mirror and reflect on what your child is saying to validate their feelings. Reassure them that you notice their effort and that they are loved in all circumstances. For example, it must be frustrating when you are not able to celebrate your birthday with your friends, right? I see that you are trying to make the best out of this situation. Identify social and emotional skills that your child is ready to learn next. Use this time to help them grow in that area. Identify what they already know and do well. Acknowledge that they have mastered those skills and can show self-efficacy in managing situation where those skills are needed. Talk about what they can work on next to keep growing in that area. Work on the next age-appropriate skill that they need to master. The next slide offers a list of developmental milestones that help children become resilient. Example, I noticed how proud you are about finishing your project on time. Would you like to call grandma to share your success with her? I bet she would love to hear how you figured out what to do and how to keep trying until it was done. Offer opportunities to practice resilience with guidance and encouragement. For example, if you want them to approve their ability to identify and talk about emotions, spend time identifying and labeling emotions while watching shows, when reading stories, and during real situations at home. Practicing together builds a stronger relationship. And remember, it's okay not to be perfect. You build resilience by working through challenges and failures. It's okay if your child still needs your support and guidance to cope with challenges. Provide encouragement and support, emphasizing that errors are opportunities to try again. For example, you practiced your math all week and got all your multiplication problems right on the test. Your grade shows that you made great progress. I bet you are feeling proud. What do you want to concentrate on now? Here are a few strategies that build resilience. Check in, check out using emotional thermometers, feeling wheels, and or pictorial feeling charts. Identifying feelings is essential to managing them. Using a visual chart like this one, a feelings wheel or thermometer with older children helps you start conversations about emotions. This will build your caring relationship as you model and teach them how to identify and label emotions. You can find this chart and other resources at dotolearn.com. Breathing deeply in a rhythmic pattern helps our bodies to calm down when we are upset. There are many breathing strategies that can be used with adults and children. Here is a simple one that can be used at any level. Let's give it a try. Place your finger on the star and cross over to the side of the eight labeled breathe in. Take a deep breath while you move your finger around the circle while you count one, two, three, four. Cross over, then start again while moving into the breathe out section, slowly letting the air out as you count one, two, 
three, four. Repeat multiple times as you breathe in and then out while tracing the eight and counting. As adolescents approach college and career, they will need to use their SEL skills to reach their goals and to build a foundation for long lasting success. Parents can be a powerful force in supporting healthy and long-term social and emotional well-being to help adolescents achieve post-secondary success. District resources are available by calling the Parent Helpline at 407-317-3694 or visiting the OCPS Student Services website. We hope you have enjoyed the presentation this evening. If you have any further questions, you can contact Mental Health Services Director Anna Williams-Jones at anna.williams-jones at ocps.net. Thanks, Anna, for sharing this great information on self-awareness and responsible decision-making. Hello, my name is Nicole Gurley, and I'm an Orange County Public Schools College Transition Counselor. There are five of us that go out into the high schools every week in order to help students with anything college and career related. Today, I'll be talking about what a student can be doing in order to make sure they are prepared to apply and be accepted to their college of choice. These days, most colleges pride themselves on looking for holistic students. What that means is that the colleges are looking for students that are well-rounded. They not only look at the data of their grade point average or GPA and or test scores, but look at the applicant as a whole. They want students that have gone above just getting good grades and go out to help others in order to help make themselves better people. What are the students doing after school and in their free time away from studying? Students should try and take the most rigorous courses as possible while still maintaining a high GPA. Each student's course load will look different depending on their academic level, as well as their interests and future plans. OCPS offers many different types of accelerated learning, some of which a student has to apply or get a school transfer, while others are open to anyone. Always remember that a C is a C, so no matter what classes a student takes, they need to reach for A's and B's no matter how rigorous the course. Make sure that the students are ready for the level of work that they choose so their grades do not suffer. Choosing classes for the following year is a very important time. Colleges will look at a student's transcript in order to see if a student is challenging himself or herself and ready to be successful in courses in college. Any high school class that a student has taken will appear in a student's transcript, even if the high school course was taken in middle school. A student must take at least two years of the same world language to be accepted into a college. They can take them at a two-year state college before transferring to a university if they'd rather wait, but it's recommended to take them in high school. Why is it so important to take rigorous courses? Well, besides looking good on a transcript, they also help with the student's GPA. On a normal, unweighted scale, an A is worth four points, B is three points, C is two points, Ds are one point, and Fs are zero points. The GPA calculation is just an average of all of the student's grades in each class. When an OCPS weights the GPA, they add one point to any honors class. So the A becomes five, B is four, C is three, Ds and Fs stay the same. Colleges also make their own GPA with only core classes and advanced classes and weigh the honors courses half a point instead of the one point that OCPS uses. Honors classes are important for the GPA. However, there are other important advanced level classes. All advanced placement, dual enrollment, international baccalaureate, and advanced international Cambridge exam courses are all weighted the same. On the unweighted scale, they do not receive any extra points, but on OCPS's scale, they're weighted two points and for colleges, they're weighted just one point. Keep in mind that all of these courses, whether core classes or electives, will also be included in the college GPA. It is also worth a mention that the GPA scale for the Bright Future Scholarship weighs all honors and advanced courses only half a point. Here in Florida, we have 12 public universities. Every year they post what the middle 50% of their acceptances had for GPA and test scores. They also post deadline dates and other important information. Keep in mind the GPA listed will be a recalculated college GPA with only certain classes. 
Here is a graphic of what the matrix looks like every year. You can see the Florida public universities listed, as well as how to apply, average GPA, and average SAT and ACT scores. Dual enrollment programs are a great opportunity for our students to show a rigorous level of coursework while starting to earn college credit. Students are enrolled in both the high school and the college at the same time, so they receive both high school and college credits. Some students are able to complete their entire associate's degree while still in high school. All of our dual enrollment programs offer free tuition and books, with only occasional minimal costs for additional course requirements. Orange County Public Schools partners with four different colleges for dual enrollment at all high schools. Valencia College, University of Central Florida, University of Florida, and Orange Technical College. Some high schools have partnered with other colleges as well, so make sure to check with your high school to see if they have other programs. Each of these programs has its own requirements and applications to attend. They also each have their own system in place for registering for classes, paying for books, taking the classes. The best place to get information is on their direct websites, but your school should have more information as well. Students must make sure that they are prepared to take college level courses before they decide on a dual enrollment program because there is no easy way to drop the courses. These classes will stay on a college transcript forever, even though the student is only in high school or middle school. Valencia College is probably our most popular dual enrollment program throughout the district. Students have the chance to graduate from high school with their associate in the arts degree, which is their first two years of college paid for. Students in sixth through 12th grade can take classes through Valencia College as long as they have a 3.0 unweighted high school GPA. Students can take classes at Valencia in their home school, or they can take all of their classes at Valencia. Students must have started previously in order to take a course in the summer. The University of Central Florida also accepts dual enrollment students from sixth through 12th grade, as well as early admission to senior high school students. These students must be very strong and score either a 1330 on their SAT or a 28 on their ACT and have a 3.8 recalculated college GPA. They can take either online or face-to-face -face courses. Another option for students in 11th and 12th grade is taking online courses through the University of Florida. The students not only can use their SAT of an 1100 or ACT score of a 22, but also PSAT scores of an 1130. They also must have a 3.6 unweighted GPA. Students can only take two courses each semester. Dual enrollment may seem like an incredible experience, but it may not be for everyone. Students are able to get a look into college life while taking free courses and can try and finish college sooner. It also may look great on a transcript for colleges that they are applying to. On the downside, some top colleges prefer AP courses at the high school over the dual enrollment courses. The AP courses are not more rigorous, but the content is consistent, so wherever the student is taking AP English, the AP exam will be the same. So the curriculum is consistent. If a student is taking Freshman Comp 1 at Valencia, the teacher may change the curriculum. Another problem that students run into is that the college grades will stay in the college transcript forever. So if anyone in the future needs the college transcript, those grades from high school will be there, as well as averaged into the college GPA. Another option for our 11th and 12th grade students that is different than the other dual enrollment programs is through Orange Technical College. If a student is interested in receiving a technical certificate, they can check with the career specialist at their high school to see what programs are offered. Students will take part of their classes at the high school and get bused to and from the technical school. These credits can transfer to Valencia, however, they do not transfer to other universities. Besides colleges looking at a student's GPA and transcripts, the college may also look at the student's test scores. There are some colleges that may be test optional, so the student may not need to send test scores. However, many colleges, including our state university system in Florida, require test scores as part of the application process. Here in Orange County, all students have access to the Khan Academy program in order to help them study. The program uses previous PSAT and SAT scores to build a curriculum for the student. They will practice these deficit skills to prep for future SAT testing. Additionally, some of the high schools also offer special test prep programs. 
Students will take the PSAT and have the opportunity to take the SAT for free annually. If they take the PSAT their junior year, the scores can be used toward qualifying for the National Merit Scholarship, leading to additional scholarships and some college acceptances. Colleges look at both academics and extracurricular involvement. Students do not need to drive themselves crazy with too many activities, as they still need to keep their grades up. But instead, find activities that they are passionate about and truly enjoy. Work does count, so if a student needs to work to make money, colleges will take that into consideration as well. Another thing to think about is that colleges will pay special attention to any activities that the students have leadership roles, as they are looking for future leaders at their schools. Along with extracurricular activities, colleges will also look at community service involvement. Again, it is not how many hours a student has completed, unless they are working towards a scholarship, but that they are actually committed and passionate about the project. If a student does not find a community service opportunity that they are passionate about, the student may want to look into starting a project. Finding a community service project that ties into their future or major is usually a great way for students to make sure they are on the right track with what they want to do. Another thing that can help a college application is attending a summer program. Some programs do cost money, but others offer scholarships. Many colleges have summer programs based on certain majors, while others offer a variety of choices to try. Here are just a few that students have attended at UCF, MIT, and Duke. While students are preparing for college, they should also think about how they're going to pay for it by getting free scholarship money. Here in Florida, we have the Florida Financial Aid Application, where during their senior year, students can fill out one application to match 14 different scholarships and grants. As long as a student fills out the one application and meets the requirements, they will automatically receive the money if they attend college in Florida. Here are the requirements for the Bright Futures Scholarship, which is one of the 14 scholarships a student can receive. The Florida Academic Scholarship is currently 100% tuition at a Florida public university. A student must have a 3.5 GPA with 16 core classes, including two years of the same world language, and either a 1330 on the SAT or 29 on the ACT, as well as 100 hours of community service documented on the high school transcript. The next scholarship is the Florida Medallion, which is 75% tuition paid at a Florida public university, and the student needs a 3.0 GPA in the same 16 classes, and either a 1210 on the SAT or a 25 on the ACT, and 75 hours of community service. Students have five years after graduation in order to reinstate the scholarship. So if they leave Florida and come back within five years, they can use the scholarship money then. They just have to have an application on file before they graduate. If attending a Florida private university, check with the college as some are matching full tuition or a portion of the tuition. Besides the Florida Academic and Florida Medallion Scholarships, Bright Futures also offers a scholarship for technical education students. This scholarship is only good towards a technical certification or AS degree. They must have three credits in the same technical program and a 3.0 GPA in certain classes. They can also use a PERT test as well as SAT or ACT. These students would also need 30 hours of community service. Another thing to think about when preparing for college is how you are going to pay. The main applications like the FAFSA and Florida Financial Aid application will not be available until October 1st of the student's senior year, as are a lot of other various scholarships. One scholarship that students can start working on as early as ninth grade is Raise.me. In Raise.me, students will receive micro scholarships for multiple factors, including grades, classes, and extracurricular activities. Students would continuously enter their achievements into the website until they receive a total dollar amount in scholarship money their senior year. The colleges that are part of the Raise.me community would accept the Raise.me money if it was more than the college itself was already offering to the student. Students in their junior year can sign up for the College Board Opportunity Scholarship, where they can complete tasks 
in order to go into drawings for $500 scholarships. These tasks are college related and therefore beneficial to all students. If students complete all tasks by their senior year, they will go into a drawing for $40,000. If you have any further questions, we have extensive college and career support for our students in Orange County. Every high school has a college and career center that is run by a college and career specialist. The district also has five college transition counselors that go out into the high schools to help with anything college and career related. It is never too late to get involved in your student's future. Thank you for attending this session and we hope you are feeling more prepared to assist your student on whatever path he or she may choose. Thanks, Nicole, for sharing with us the different colleges and scholarship opportunities. For additional viewings of tonight's episode, you can check the website at www.pfe.ocps.net, which houses all of our previous sessions. You can also view our calendar of Engage360 events, parent academies, and virtual parent academies for this school year. Lastly, remember, you can follow Parent and Family Engagement on Twitter using our Twitter handle at OCPS underscore PFE and our Twitter hashtag, hashtag OCPS PFE to stay up to date with our workshops, helpful tips, and our resources. Thank you for tuning in to our fourth and final parent and family engagement virtual parent academy event of this school year. We hope to see you on May 15th for our last parent academy of the school year. Have a great rest of your evening.